you guys in the chat. I just found out my AirPods might die. They're low battery for some reason. They didn't charge overnight. So if you lose me, also let me know. Today, we're talking about something that is kind of like a bone chilling realization in my life and something that I want to really talk to you guys about and that is how to have a strong mind. Okay, that's the topic for today. Super excited. This is going to be a little bit shorter than my usual for me at least. You guys know I like long live streams because I have to run for an appointment at 9.45. So uh, what I'll do is I'll go through my training and then we'll see if we have time for a meditation and take some questions. But if not, I'll give you guys time to think about and like integrate the stuff and then I'll be back later this week as well. Thank you. Morning, morning. Good morning, everyone. So I was recently talking to a friend and they told me this story of watching an interview of Kim Kardashian. And I don't know if this was on Letterman, like I don't know where this interview was, but apparently she was asked the question, Kim, what is your superpower? And Kim K replied, that, like I have chills every time I like think about this. She replied, my superpower is that I have a really strong mind. I don't know what it was about that and the way that my friend relayed the story to me. I literally had like tingles go up my spine and it was just like, it, I don't know. It was, it was literally like God was speaking to me and I loved it. Like still to this day when I'm repeating the story, I sent out an email this morning inviting you guys to this live stream. I get chills every time. I think about this as if it's like I'm remembering something like that, that I've always known. It's like deep within. I can't explain it. Tell me in the chat. Give this a thumbs up if you feel what I'm feeling. Every time you hear that, I have a really strong mind. I think that just a woman declaring that, owning that, claiming that, the faith, the confidence, the guts, right? It takes to be able to say, I have a really strong mind is like soul shifting for me. So this is something that I want all of us to claim. This is something that I want all of us to have. I hope that I raise my three children to be able to say I have a really strong mind. Like that would just be oh, so delicious to my soul. So after I heard the story, I kind of was like, oh, why did I have, why did I have such a gut level visceral reaction to this? And then the question popped up, Mina, do I have a really strong mind? Like me asking myself. And then as I always do, I projected the question asked back to God. And I said, God, do I have a really strong mind? And in the days following this, I was journaling. And um, just throughout the day, I started seeing the results. I started seeing the proof, the answers that I do have a really strong mind. In fact, I literally wrote an entire book on how to have a really strong mind, right? Um, you know, my book is titled Lady Balls, How to Become Savagely Successful in a World Addicted to Suffering. The truth is that the way that our ancestors evolved through, they had a lot of suffering for sure, right? Like um, there was a very famous quote, I don't know if it was from an anthropologist or someone, I, I forget his name, but he said that uh, homo sapiens have survived scarcity for millions of years. I'm not sure if they can survive abundance. And that was also one of those like bone chilling things that compared to our ancestors, I'm not saying everything's perfect on this planet, but compared to our ancestors, like we really do have it better than most, but it's so easy to get caught up in our wiring to be looking out for suffering and looking out for those addictions, right? So what I want to share with you today is some things that have helped me over the years on building a strong mind, I definitely do not see myself as someone that was like raised naturally to be that. Um, although I did start getting some of that training from my parents later on, I would say, I remember when I was like 12, 13 onwards, where I would say my parents started like sharing stories and saying things which could be classified as like, okay, you were trained to have a strong mind. But in my teenage years as an early adult, I didn't feel it. So I look at this as sort of like the cave woman versus the goddess. I'm drinking my favorite tea. I'm so obsessed with this tea. 
it's caffeine free and um, I really, really love it. So uh, the cave woman is where we recognize that we are in a human body and we are, we do have a human brain and it functions through, it functions in a certain way because of our evolutionary history and because of what our ancestors, and when I say ancestors, I'm not just talking about your parents and gra grandparents. I'm talking about like early homo sapiens, right? Like millions of years of evolution. So even before we could have called ourselves homo sapiens about 350,000 years ago, even before that, there it has been a lot of struggle in our past. There has been a lot of hardship in our past. And so our brain is addicted to that and looks for that, right? Uh, the people that sat around saying, everything's fine, we'll eventually find food, don't worry about it, they died, right? Like, term, like, Situations were different and they were harder back then. The people that were very vigilant and like, okay, let's keep looking out for threats. Uh, are, maybe we're going to die from hunger. Maybe the tribe next door is going to attack us. Those That DNA survived. So they were hyper vigilant. A lot of anthropologists, evolutionary, uh, evolutionary scientists talk about this, that life was tough. It was tough. That's the brain that you have in your body right now that's the mind that's how your mind functions it's it's designed to look for problems it's designed to solve problems create problems if there aren't any so what i did in my life and there was some point where i decided that i didn't have the language of strong mind i'm not gonna pretend like i knew this phrase at that time but i decided that I was going to be powerful and that I was going to be strong. I didn't have the verbiage of strong mind, but I knew that I was very highly reactive, that I was easily influenced by people. I had people in my life at this time, they were constantly, I don't, I want to give them the benefit of the doubt and say that they mean well, but they were constantly saying negative things to me. They were kind of putting doubt in my mind. They were feeding into my already very anxious mind and they would send me in this spiral of reacting of negative thoughts of just anxiety panic attacks so i had to make a decision i asked myself mina why are you so easily influenced like even if you love these people even if these some of these people are close to you why does it take one person to make one comment to send me down this spiral right and that was the decision that i made that i am no longer going to be that person i'm going to now have discernment in my life i'm going to have you know like strong boundaries of what i process and how and there is a very famous carol mice uh quote she says, not every opinion needs to be processed. And that's kind of the mindset that I was in, that people are allowed to have opinions. They can say what they want, but I do not have to process everything and take it on as my problem, right? The other thing I had to lean on as I was going through this journey was spirituality and faith. So b believing that God wants me to be happy, that God is there for me, that God is always there and available to lean on. And not only is God there for me, but he sends angels. He sends resources. Resources are always available to me. I'm always open to new and more up-leveled resources. I'm always available to help that is aligned with my soul. So there was this part of like, again, the cave woman versus the goddess the goddess is there saying, hey, you know, you are God's child. You can have faith. You can choose faith over fear. You can have spirituality in your life. You can choose to surrender and you can remain open to God's resources, whether it's in the form of people, books, you know, YouTube videos, helpful things that align you. So how do I know that something's helpful? It puts me back in my field. What do I mean by that? When I'm in my field, I'm connected to God. I'm in faith. I feel good, okay? Now, the cave woman in me often gets knocked out of my field because this is life. That's the journey, right? Like if, some, God forbid, like a, a child is ill, a, a family member is ill, you know, I hear about something negative happening in the world, right? There's a war or there's suffering. I can momentarily fall out of my field, but how fast and what is the route that I take to get back into my field? When I'm in my field, I'm open to God. 
When I'm in my field, I see all the possibilities. When I'm in my field, I surrender. When I'm in my field, I see that resources, solutions are always available to me. When I get knocked out of my field, I'm in my cave woman. That means I'm in fear. That means I'm in doubt. That means that momentarily, the umbilical cord between me and God has been, I'm not going to say it's broken because it's never broken, but it's like, it's like restricted. It's constricted. It's like the open channel has been blocked or I'm not receiving it because I'm in my faith. Okay. So how did I do this? I did this through various tools, many of which I have been blessed to be able to document in my book. And I'm so glad that this is a resource, not only for me to refer back to, but for all of us and for my children. And I hope my grandchildren and my great, great grandchildren one day. So this book has a lot of those resources, and I'll talk a little bit about them. Um, also, as a, sort of a helpful additional tool to this masterclass, I have put my basic babe bundle on a flash sale. You guys know that bundle barely ever, hardly ever goes on a flash sale. But I took off 222 off of it. There's no code needed. The link is in the description box. I'll also throw it in the chat for you guys. So like I always say, resource is always available. Help is always available. You get to have options in your life, okay? So let me talk about some of these things, okay? As I was getting ready for this, Things came, uh, I was thinking, okay, well, what were the tools that I would say were the most helpful? Number one, meditation. What meditation does, it, it creates this subtle bridge between the cavewoman and the goddess. So what you are learning to do when you are meditating, and in the Basic Babe Bundle, I have like over 20 uh, meditations in the Love Light Meditations portion of it. You can also buy that separately. It's like a very small price to get like a whole host of meditations that you can try on for yourself and see which one you like. But what it does is it teaches you how to toggle, okay? Very gently. We're not forcing anything. We're just gently toggling. So when you're in your goddess, things are good. Your mind is open. Your heart is open. You're aligned. You you have open communication with source. Let's say something happens and you get knocked out of your field. You're in your cave woman right now, okay? You're having a basic babe moment, okay? You might go into fear, or you might have a self-aware Barbie moment, and you might start efforting and hustling, okay? That's also a very cave woman type of thing to do. Well, meditation trains you to take your attention gently off of the basic babe, the self-aware Barbie, aka the cave woman, and slowly transition to the goddess. And you start poking holes in that story of like uh, fear, of doubt, of not believing that God is looking out for you and not believing that, you know, all is well and that everything is in progress and that everything is working out for you, right? We can all, the best of us could get knocked out of our field. That's just life, right? I have a family member. She is just a divine example of someone that it has faith, is completely surrendered to God, like 100%. Like this, this woman I see as like the ultimate role model in my life. Well, a couple of years ago, her husband got diagnosed with a very, very serious uh, like health issue. Very serious, okay? It was not looking good for him. And momentarily, just for a blip, I saw her fall out of the field. And of course, we were all there to uplift her, send her like, you know, comforting messages. But it was her own decision through that process to remember that everything is happening for her and that everything will work out in the best interest for her and her family and especially her husband. And I also had the pleasure of seeing her get back into her field, realign with God, get that umbilical cord with source flowing again. I'm gonna keep time. I don't like doing these trainings when I have an appointment, but uh, sorry, uh, that's the only time I could squeeze it in today. So meditation was a really important tool in my life for this. The second one I would say is invocations. I grew up in kind of a culture where I saw, and I think most of us can relate to this, where I saw prayer as something where you're like disempowered 
and you're like begging God for mercy kind of a thing. Like, please, God, help me with this, right? Well, invocations are a completely different form of prayer. And what I learned about invocations is that an invocation is basically a active prayer. It's a declaration. It's basically you declaring your free will of what you want the outcome to be. It's you deciding and co-creating with God versus being disempowered, right? So it look at it as, um, you know, we have a parent-child relationship often with God. So if you would use that metaphor, a, a regular prayer sometimes can feel like a toddler throwing a tantrum. Do you, like, you know what I mean? Like it can feel like that to a lot of us. Versus a, um, you know, an invocation going back to that parent child relationship could be a child parent, a child parent negotiation. It could be a conversation, you know, like when kids are like, well, is it okay if I do this after I do da 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 da? Like they're having a conversation with you, they're looking for options, they're open to co creating with you. So that's how I see an invocation. I have a lot of invocations in various courses, but um, I have put a lot of my best invocations in my contained in love journal. So you can find some of those in the back as well as a resource. So I have added those for you guys. Again, resources always available. I also have some cord cutting and things like that um, on YouTube. So you can also um, go back and refer to those. Another thing that I've learned on this journey keeping time. Hello, everyone. I just got the basic bait bundle and was just watching it when you went live. Thank you. Oh my god, I love this. And I think this is going to complement the really high vibration teachings in that bundle. So perfect, Diane. Here's another really, really big thing. You have to be careful into what grids you're plugging into. I did a whole training on this back in the day yet I think last year, I forgot what course I put those bonuses in. Oh, I wish I could remember. I'm going to have to ask. Okay, I'll have to ask my team, but I had a whole training. Let me know if you guys remember that. So what this means is that the cave woman part of us is very, very highly influenceable, especially as a woman. I know that it's very taboo and culturally inappropriate in the West to talk about gender differences between men and women. But I, when I went to university, that was 20 years ago, luckily there wasn't so much political correctness back then and I was actually able to hear the truth and also in my culture they recognize and understand that men and women have evolved differently and we have different hormones and we have different brains and conditioning so this is true for both men and women but especially for women that if we plug into fear grids we double up triple up quadruple up on the limiting belief so for example let's say that something happens where I'm, I, I'm knocked out of my field and I'm in fear for a moment. Let's say it's like just starting to creep in and I call a friend or I talk to some, you know, a coworker about this issue. Well, is the person I'm talking to plugged into their field or are they in their scarcity and their fear? If the person that I talk to is even more into their fear, they're going to put more fear into me because what I'm doing essentially is I'm unplugging my umbilical cord with God and I'm plugging it into their fear. So now if I was 10% fear, 90% faith, I'm going to now start sourcing more fear from them instead of sourcing more faith from God, right? So this women are very, very highly influenced by this. A little mole can turn into a whole mountain if you go into the wrong grid. Now, someone brought to my attention recently that what I refer to as grids, this um, author, I don't know his name. Uh, I tried to read this book years ago, but it went over my head. It's a very, very hard read. I am going to revisit it and see if I can read it now. But it, the book's name is called Reality Transurfing. Let me know if you've heard of that book. He calls it Pendulums. And he, I believe, says uh, that 
pendulums can be either positive or negative, same as grids, and that whatever pendulum or grid you put more energy on can start taking on sort of a life of its own. So I don't, I don't know how to explain it in his work because I had a very hard time reading that book. But how I see a grid is, am I unplugging myself from divine source or am I, uh, and then plugging myself into fear or am I now, am I still plugged into source? Now I do have people in my life. I know exactly who these people are, where if I am starting to fall off the grid, go in, like get off my field, go into fear. These are the people I call. These are the people I text. These are the people I schedule a lunch with because these people are not going to put more fear in me. They're going to say, Hey, do you remember that you're a child of God? Do you even know who you are? Like, remember your training, remember who you are. And instantly I'm going to be like, Oh my God, the cave woman showed up. Thank you so much for reminding me who I really am. I stay away from people that are going to be putting more fear in me because that's not what I need, right? Let me give you an example from like real life right now. So um, you guys know about almost two years ago, in June, it's going to be two years, I moved into this new neighborhood, this new house. Well, I loved my doctor in my old neighborhood. Like she was amazing. I loved her. And I was really sad uh, that I would have to change her. So at that time, I decided to like just keep her as my doctor and just go there, even though it's like an hour and a half drive each way. So um, that doctor up until last year was telling me that um, that the the kind of like the recommendations on mammograms have changed and that I don't need to have a mammogram until I'm 45. Okay. So I was like, okay, I'm fine with that. I didn't want to, that's, that is a little bit of a, um, it's a little bit of a sore topic for me, especially because I'm now getting to that age where my mom was diagnosed with stage three cancer. And this is the month of my mom's birthday. And this is the month that my mom, my dad passed away. So I can get really touchy with like that subject. So anyways, that's, I was like, okay, I'm going to have a mammogram at 45. Well, this year, um, my husband was like, the drive is way too long. Like you get to have an amazing like doctor in this neighborhood. And, and I was like, but I love her. And he's like, you do, but you can find someone even better like this and something better as you always say. Right. I was like, yes, you're right. I could find someone even better. So I found a new doctor, like literally walking distance from me. And it's like a group ran by these two women and both doctors. And so when you first go to them, both of them see you separately, but both of them see you and both of them looked at my history, my family history, and they were like, babe, you need to go get a mam mammogram. I started freaking out. Them saying, you have to go get a mam mammogram completely knocked me off my field. Like you'd be, you'd be like a woman of my caliber, someone that does inner work as much as I do, the amazing leader and teacher that I am. I got knocked out of my field. I felt emotional and I was like, well, my previous doctor said I have to wait at 40. She's like, yes, you can wait. But with your family history and the fact that you do turn 44 this year, it would be nice to have kind of something on record showing like you can almost look at it as like the baseline. And I was like, damn it. So I come home. I'm arguing with my husband about it. Like he's like, babe, what's the big deal? Like, why are you so against this? And then I was like, Oh my God, why is this knocking me out my field? So I, what do I do? I always go to my journal. I'm like, Mina, what is coming up? What's really going on underneath the surface? What's the big deal of going and getting a mammogram, right? By the way, that's the appointment I have to go to today. So I, I journaled on it and all this stuff came up. All of these stories of like, what if what happened to my mom happens to me? Da, 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 all this stuff, right? My children are still young, blah, blah. And then I started asking godly questions. I started saying, well, what happened to your mom happened because she never went for a routine test. That was literally my biggest argument and fight with my mom. All the time I would fight with her and argue with her, please go for regular checkups. Like, I don't know what it is with immigrant parents not wanting to do that. I'm like, I'm literally 
I was against her not doing like getting the test. And then now I'm now going to go get the test. So I'm like, oh my God, I get to break this generational curse of like running away and not getting tests done. I get to face this head on. I get to have faith. And then the next one was, what if they find something? I'm like, what if they do? What will happen? Okay, well, then it will be early. Resources always available. If God is with me. I have options available. I have solutions. So I went line item by line item of all of my fears and basically use the six step process I have given you guys in the basic babe bundle. Also in my lady balls book, you can find all my books at ladyballs ladyballsbook.com. So I work through it. Now imagine if instead of working through it, I had gone to someone that was equally afraid of getting tests done equally in their fear. And if I went to them and I said, Hey, you know, I have to go for this mammogram and I'm freaking out because of what happened to my mom. Well, they would say, yeah, I would be scared too. Or you should be scared. There's a lot of false positives and blah, 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 right? I had the option of choosing fear by plugging into that grid. Or I had the option to plug into positive grids like those doctors and my husband saying, what's the big deal? It's just a test, right? You're still in control. You are still choosing what you want to do. And then I started journaling. I'm When I'm journaling, I'm connecting to source. When I'm journaling, I'm asking God for advice. When I'm journaling, I'm surrendering, surrendering the outcome to God. And I'm working through my limiting beliefs. I'm connecting with source, with my guides, with my ancestors, with angels. So all of those things are available to us, right? All right. The other thing uh, that I want to share, and I think I only have time to get into this before I can take... Uh, uh, some questions from you. So this is a big one. And this came up recently. Um, my husband's friend is going through something. And this is something that I was really impressed because when his friend called my husband, I heard my husband, he didn't use the same verbiage that I use, but I saw my husband kind of consoling him using this concept. And I taught you this concept in my book in a lot of my courses. And it's the concept of right sizing. So when something comes to us, when something happens, right, we can all go into our fear and we can take that thing and we can turn it into, we can, uh, make, you know, remember McDonald's back in the day, supersize, supersize it, I think it was called, what is supersizing, right? You could supersize your meal. So what supersizing means is that you, in, instead of taking the problem for what it is, like logical, rationally looking at it and saying, okay, this is what I'm working with. You add spice to it. You add masala to it. You add story to it. You add fear to it. And now this little bitty problem, maybe it was big, okay? Like my, like his friend, you know, lost his job. So that, that might be a big problem to him. But what's happened is that it's, he has other sources to pay his bills he got a huge like package, like there's other sources available. But what started happening is that fear started creeping in. And instead of right sizing the problem, when you right size, you don't undermine. So we're not saying losing a job is not a big deal. It is a big deal, especially for a man I can imagine being the provider of his family. It is a big deal. However, is it the end of the world? No. Is it um, life altering? Perhaps in a good way, maybe he's going to do something bigger and better, right? Is his livelihood dependent on this one source of income? No. You know, is this job his God? Absolutely not, right? It, there's infinite sources available for an income for him. So what we do when we right size a problem is that we stay on course, we see it for what it is. We don't add mirch masala to it, like we say in my culture. We don't add tons of story to it. We don't plug into the wrong fear grids and then add other people's limiting beliefs and story to it. We stay focused on, okay, well, this is the problem that has presented itself and what sources, what resources, what solutions are available to me. Remember when I talk about staying at the desire counter? Like what gets to happen? 
How does this get to work out for you? Like, how is the outcome going to play out? The best way to predict your future is to create it, right? As Joe Dispenza always says, you have to create your future. You have to say, you know what? This gets to be a blessing. This gets to work out for me. This gets to end well. So that's what I mean when you right size. So I heard my husband telling him, hey, let's look at the facts. The facts are this, this, and this. This other stuff that you're adding to it, well, is that ultimately true? And his friend was like, no, I think it's like mainly psychological. Exactly, right? So now again, so it's like the cave woman versus the goddess. Well, it's the cave man versus like the God source connection, right? Same thing. So those are the things that I have for you today. I'm sure there's a million more I could have given you, but um, in the time that I have today, refer to Lady Balls, obviously for more, take advantage of the Basic Babe Bundle Flash Sale. This bundle hardly ever goes on sale, so um, don't let this rich masala, yes. <laughs> I'm glad you guys find that funny. Okay, let me see what you're saying. Um, it's interesting you mentioned this about getting close to the age your mom transitioned. This thought of us celebrating you when you turned 50 came to my mind recently. Diane, I am going to take you up on that offer, okay? You better be at my 50th celebrating with me. Like, let's just seriously hold that pose. That's, that's a, can you see that that's a positive grid? That's what I want to plug into. She's plugged into God. That's what I want to plug into. So that's a positive grid versus someone saying, oh my God, right. What if that happens to you? What are you going to do, Mina? That's not the grid that I want to uh, plug into. Oh, someone put that book. Okay, yes. Oh, it's in the Lakshmi. Yes. It was, in, uh, it was Million Dollar Babe. I just listen to it okay so those trainings on the grid maybe i'll book okay let me see if i can maybe for a limited time open that back up for you guys um on youtube maybe third thursday's video i i will gift that to you momentarily but someone reminded me thank you queen that it's in the million dollar babe do you guys know that i recently added like i think it was like uh, i want to say like 20 hours please don't quote me on this i have so much content i forget but i believe it was like 20 hours of extra content to the million dollar babe course so let me know if you were able to see that as well so let me see so the, that was the lakshmi training about the grid i might bonus that on youtube for you guys for extra couple of days um on tuesday Oh, it's also in the Sajda course. You guys are freaking awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love that my students know my courses better than I do. That is hilarious. Uh, yes, I did bring out the whiteboard. That whiteboard. I sure did. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Diane. I'm imagining you there and us celebrating. And yes, yes. I received a proposal, but he walks very fast, and I told him it makes me feel left behind. It bothers me so much, and I've shared this with him. Is this a red flag? Absolutely. I don't think it is, right? Um, I think, again, as I talk about in the modern dating course, we want to right-size the situation. In the modern dating course, I talk about having non-negotiable, and then everyone has things that may not be a preference for us but it's not a deal breaker right my husband also walks really fast and we do family walks every evening so yeah sometimes he's like walking like really really ahead of us what I've learned is that if I try to catch up to him then he doesn't notice that he's walking too fast if I keep walking at my pace, he will eventually notice and adjust himself to me. I know that sounds kind of funny, but some of these things we have to take a little bit lightheartedly. Otherwise, like everyone's going to have something. Is this literally a deal breaker and a non-negotiable for you? I don't know. Maybe it is, but it wouldn't be for me personally because I feel like there's bigger things to put on that list. Like this, my husband does that too. I don't think that's a big deal. He's just walking at his pace. He's all, he's also 6'2", and I'm obviously not. So he's got longer legs. Sometimes it's just little quirks like that. 
Thank you, babe. Oh my God. I love you guys. I love this wonderful grid that we've created together of just happy people uplifting each other plugged into God's source. This is great. I feel I'm going to have to repeat this live and digest it. A lot of gold compacted. I'm so glad. I was feeling a little guilty because I wanted this to be a really long, delicious live. But then when I was looking at my schedule, I'm like, this is when I can do it. This is when I'm just inspired. Um, this is when I'm going to do it. So do we have time? Okay, let's, can we please close this out with a little meditation? Let's do that. And then I'll head to my appointment plugged into God's grid. So we're going to settle in. If you're able to do so, close your eyes. Don't do that if you're driving or come back to it then, obviously. Use your discretion. And we're just going to become aware of our breath. No forcing, no pulling, no pushing. Ah, just becoming aware of our natural rhythm. Becoming aware of God's divine light all around us, above, below, surrounding us, within us. And becoming aware of the divine, golden, umbilical cord between us and source. Becoming conscious of it. Deciding that it gets to be there and it gets to be stronger. Exercising it. So it builds even stronger as a muscle. And asking God to unplug us from negative, uninspiring, soul-sucking, neg uh, triggering grids. Asking God to return to sender what is not ours and bring back to us what is ours. And through this umbilical cord with God, we remember who we are, God's children, God's divine creation. And with that, we remember our training. We remember the word of God in our life. We remember the path of God. We remember our heart. And with that, we release fear and we embody faith. We hand over to the divine anything that is no longer serving us, any worry, any anxiety, any negative thoughts, anything left unresolved, any open problems, open windows, we now decide to hand over to God. And dear God, please make our umbilical cord with you stronger. Make it more dominant. Make it front of mind and soul. And please always remind us that you are always available. That you are an option. That you are a decision. That you are a choice away. Keep sending us those divine nudges, signs symbols, and communication. And with that golden light that you're seeing right now, make the intention to open your heart wider, your field cleaner, make the intention to be in inspiration, in spirit, in God, in the divine. And letting yourself bathe in that golden divine light. Oh my God, that feels so good.
cleansing your mind and declare, claim, and own, I have a really strong mind. Repeat after me. I have a really strong mind. I have a really strong mind. I'm tapped into God's source and I have a really strong mind. I have a really strong mind. When I'm in my field, I have a really strong mind. When I'm plugged into God, I have a really strong mind. God has created me to have a really strong mind. The option is always available to have a really strong mind. I now own and declare that I have a really strong mind. I am so powerful when I'm connected to God and I have a really strong mind. And with my really strong mind, I'm always co-creating with God. My reality, my body, my abundance, my health, my family, my passion, my sacred work, all of it is in co-creation with the divine. And with that, one last time, we say, claim, declare, and make it so, I have a really strong mind. And so it is. And whenever you're ready, I feel like I don't want to even open my eyes, but I, I must. That feels so good. It feels so delicious. And right on time. Okay, I, 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 have, I did it right on time with five minutes to spare, so I'm not rushing. Thank you so much. That's so helpful to hear. It triggers my abandonment wounds, babe. I feel you. I feel you. You know, sometimes when we're bringing story to something, it's like we're outsizing the pro problem, right? Like the right size problem is this man walks really fast. What you're adding to it is that he's abandoning me. He's too fast. Is this a red flag, right? Can you see that? So we need to be as conscious women need to be able to work that. Okay, work through that. That felt amazing, Christian said. So transformative. Yay. Good luck with your medical checkup, Mina. It's, <clears throat> it's a gift for your future self. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's a gift for your future self, health, and well-being to have full awareness of your body state. Ooh, I love that. That feels like an invocation in itself. Uh, thank you so much. I feel centered and full of faith. Yes, connected to God. Mina, thank you for that. Thank you, babe. And you know, when I'm connected to God, I have the answers within me. Now, if I'm knocked out of my field, of course, I reach out to close friends and family members to remind me to connect back. But this is a way to know when we're having to seek at, uh, answers out with, we have momentarily fallen off our grid. We have momentarily fallen out of the field. When we have all the answers by going within, connecting to God, tapping into the umbilical cord, we're plugged into the right grid. I love you so much. I hope this training finds you well. And I have lots of resources, as always, uh, in the description box of this video on my website, my books, and the Basic Babe Bundle is on flash sale. Love you, babes. I'm going to go with an open heart connected to God for my checkup. And I love you so much. Bye.